God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we will continue our study in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 6. In our last session, we read down to verse 6. Uh, today we'll start our study at verse 7. I trust that you are enjoying the Word of God, and I do want to let you know that I appreciate you for logging on. I know your time is valuable, and you take the time to listen to us. That means so much to me. Even those of you that take time to uh, send me an email or uh, give me that wonderful thumbs up, I want you to know I appreciate you so very much. Today we're going to start in verse 7, and I trust that you have your Bible and you will follow along with us as we read Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send uh, them forth by two and two, and gave them authority over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should not take nothing for their journey except a staff only, no bag, no bread, and no money uh, in their purse, but he shot, but be shot with sandals and put, uh, not put on two coats. And uh, he said unto them, uh, In whatever place ye enter uh, an house, there abide until ye depart from the, that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when ye depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah uh, in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached and men, that men should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. So we find here that uh, uh, Jesus sent uh, uh, his disciples out uh, to do the work that he had been doing. You have to understand they had followed Jesus uh, uh, much of the time during his earthly ministry, and they learned from Jesus. And, and uh, I also have you to know, when you're with someone that has an anointing and God uses them and you help them along, many times you receive part of that same anointing. And Jesus commissioned them to do the same thing that he did. He sent the twelve out and uh, he told them, now, uh, uh, in so many words, he's letting them know that uh, when you go out, you're going to be taken care of. He told them not to take uh, uh, money in their purse, and uh, you don't have to worry about taking two coats. In other words, things are going to be provided for you. And that was in this commission. And I wouldn't tell uh, every preacher that uh, you're supposed to quit your job. God's going to take care of you. Uh, he will take care of you, but uh, he didn't call all of us off the job. Uh, I know I have worked full-time in ministry myself, and I've also worked in ministry having a job. Now, if you can do that and God has called you off the job, you have my blessings and I think you should do as God has told you to do. But uh, we find in another section of scripture, he told he told them to take uh, their purse, take money in their purse and take all of the essentials. Uh, uh, you know, the, God has a calling and he will direct you in your life as to how and what you should do for him in ministry. And he told his, he told his 12 disciples, uh, I want you to go out and preach. Uh, go out and, and uh, uh, tell the good news and preach this message that you've been hearing from me. And he sent them out uh, two by two. And they went out and began to preach this great gospel. They did as Jesus had told them. And, and, and Jesus brought it down and, and, and told them, uh, whatever uh, place ye enter in a house, uh, uh, there abide until ye depart from that place. In other words, I have a place for you. Uh, when you go into a city, uh, there's going to be a place for you to stay. Uh, and they, uh, when you go into uh, this city, I'll put it in my own words, uh, if they don't receive you, uh, Jesus told them to leave that city and shake the dust off your feet. He let them know that it's going to be more tolerable for uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and you know what happened in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, they were destroyed uh, because called up their wickedness, uh, and uh, uh, the Jesus let them know that uh, for whatever city that, that won't receive you, when you leave there, shake the dust off your feet. They're going to be judged, uh, and it's going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than it would be for that city. 
And Jesus uh, uh, commissioned uh, his disciples in verse 12, we read, and they went out and preached that men should repent. Uh, and they cast out many demons and anointed with all many that were sick and healed them. Uh, you have to understand this now. His disciples had this anointing. And he sent them out uh, with that anointing so they would do uh, and uh, 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 minister to people as he did. And I want you to know God can minister to you and God, uh, God can anoint you to do a work. Uh, he can anoint you with the power of that charisma to go out and reach men and women. Uh, uh, he can anoint you with that charisma to, to preach repent uh, and men's heart will be pricked. Uh, and I'm mighty afraid that's what's going on in the day that we live. Uh, we got folks preaching all over the world, but they don't have the anointing from the Lord. They go out and, and, and teach and preach that uh, with the authority that Jesus had uh, and Jesus commissioned these 12 uh, with that authority uh, as we read verse 14 and uh, King Herod heard of him uh, for his name was spread abroad and he said uh, that John the Baptist was risen from the dead uh, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him uh, well I'm going to do some reading now I want to uh, give commentary because the scripture is, is uh, giving us uh, uh, what uh, he wants to say to us, uh, what the word is saying to us, and I don't have a lot of interpretation here, is pretty much as it would read. I may comment on uh, a section after I've getting, gotten through reading. As we go to verse 14 again, And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad. And he said, in the, uh, uh, said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Uh, others said, it is Elijah, and others said that it is a prophet, or, or like one of the prophets. But when Herod heard of it, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded, he is raised from the dead. And Herod himself said, had sent forth and laid hold on John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake. For uh, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Well, I could comment there. You want to know about soap operas and uh, uh, want to know about dysfunctional families? This was one, and, and it was actually at the top of the uh, of the nation here. Herod was king, and and Herod had uh, um, married his brother's wife. Well, uh, if that ain't if that's not dysfunction, I don't know what is, and and that's what happened in this case. Uh, shall we begin reading again at verse? 18. But John had said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Uh, well, when sometime when you when you just tell folks the truth, uh, it causes you causes you more problems than, than if you would have left it alone. But I want you to know, uh, if God commissioned you to do it, you must do it, uh, even if it leads to death. In verse 19, therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him uh, and would have killed him, but she could not. Verse 20, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous man and holy and uh, protected him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Uh, let me just explain there a little bit. Uh, Herod had a soft heart to the message of John. Uh, Herod was listening to John because he knew he was a righteous man uh, and he could sense the presence of God with him. Uh, let's read on in verse 21. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a, a supper to his lords, his uh, high captains, and chief men of Galilee. And when the daughter of uh, the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and those who sat with him, the king said unto the girl, Ask of me whatever thou wilt, and I will give thee. In other words, she danced and uh, really pleased them. Uh, let me give you a point here in verse 22. Uh, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in, uh, he put that word in, uh, number one, because of the, this marriage uh, that was really not lawful, because Herod had married uh, his brother's wife, Herodias. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, 
let me continue reading. Uh, uh, and we'll begin, take up reading at verse 23. And he swore unto her, whatever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee uh, unto the half of my kingdom. Uh, and she went forth and said to her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. Uh, can you see the vengeance of this woman or the hate of this woman for John the Baptist? Uh, well, John the Baptist only told him the truth is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Uh, the marriage that you entered into was not lawful. He just letting them know right from wrong. That was John's job. Uh, he preached repent for the kingdom of, uh, of heaven is at hand. Uh, so you have to understand it angered uh, Herodias. It angered the said Herodias uh, uh, because of uh, what had happened. And, and when this daughter asked her, let's read verse 24 again. And she went forth and said to her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, uh, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me at once on a platter the head of John the, John the Baptist. And the king was exceedingly sorry, uh, sorry uh, yet for his own sake and for their sake that who, who sat with him, he would not uh, reject her. Uh, you have to understand his king, he was bound by his words, uh, and he did not reject her. Uh, he did what she had asked of him. Uh, why? Because he had given this oath to her, uh, and as king, he, he could not go back on it. Number one, he had all the high men of Israel there, uh, and they heard him make this promise to the girl. So he had to honor it because he, being king, uh, had to honor his words uh, at all times. Uh, well, uh, Shall we read verse 27? Uh, and immediately the king sent uh, an executioner uh, and commanded uh, his head to be brought, uh, uh, to be brought uh, and he went and beheaded uh, him in the prison. What a, what a horrible thing that was done then. Uh, and brought his head on a platter uh, and gave it to the girl. Uh, and the girl gave it to her mother. Uh, and when his disciples heard of it, uh, they came and took up his corpse uh, and laid it in a tomb. Uh, can you get this picture? Isn't it a horrible thing when a woman gets this much anger in her and, and this much evil in her uh, to have an innocent man killed because she wanted to do the wrong thing uh, and he spoke out against it. And you guys, you find that spirit in the day that we live. They might, well, in the day that we live, they are killing folks. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm talking about legally, clinically, graveyard dead for, for speaking out against their wrongdoing. Uh, but not only that, they you got folks that will try to kill a man's influence uh, and say things to uh, belittle him and, and kill all the influence that he had. Uh, that is happening in the day that we live. Uh, I'm going to read two uh, more verses before we conclude this section of scripture. As we read verse 30, uh, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. Uh, and he said unto them, Go aside into a desert place. Uh, come aside in, uh, into a desert place uh, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, uh, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. You have to understand this as well. Uh, as uh, the fame of Jesus went out, and not only the fame of Jesus, the, the, the fame of his disciples, as they began to minister, word, minister the word of God uh, and, and tell men that they should repent uh, and heal the sick and raise, and raise the dead even. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so many wonderful things, cast out demons. Uh, people began to follow them, uh, and people followed from all over uh, the region, uh, and they didn't even have any leisure time. They, they couldn't relax. And Jesus said, well, let's get away uh, uh, from uh, and go to uh, a, a desert place. They call it a desert place uh, that we may rest a while. Uh, I don't care who you are. You need to rest your body. Uh, you could be very anointed, extremely anointed. Uh, but after a while, uh, your body will tire. Uh, and if you wear your body out, uh, you will not be able to function at full capacity. Uh, and God will not be able to use you. Uh, as he probably could uh, if you would temper yourself and rest yourself. Uh, well, this entire story 
And we're going to begin reading there in our next session at verse 30. Uh, but this entire study, uh, well, uh, we talked about John the Baptist and what had happened to him. And that lets me know uh, there are some good folks that, uh, who stand up for Jesus, uh, who do not uh, come out with the rosy picture. Uh, that lets you know sometime, uh, regardless of how anointed you are, uh, you may have to go through things uh, and even go to death, uh, regardless of how God uses you. Uh, God had used John the Baptist. Uh, he had used him so mightily. Uh, he preached repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, and people came all out of Jerusalem and all, all around Judea and came to hear this man preach. Uh, came to hear him. He was a powerful man. Uh, an anointed man. Uh, he had a great following. Uh, oh yes, but he spoke out against the king's wrongdoing. Uh, when he spoke out against the king's wrongdoing, uh, it got him put in prison. Uh, it got him put in jail. Uh, well, uh, not only did it get, get him put in jail, uh, it got him beheaded. Uh, he went to his death. Uh, but one thing you have to say for him, uh, he was a great man of God. Uh, you have to say uh, that he stood against wrong. Uh, he stood against evil doing. Uh, and he said, what thus saith the Lord? Uh, I declare if you're bold enough uh, to speak the truth uh, and not back up on it, uh, God will anoint you. Uh, and God will use you. But I want you to know as well, when you tell people about their wrongdoings, it does put you at a danger. In the day that we live, possibly you may not be facing a physical death, but people will scorn you. They will talk about you. They will come against you. Why? Because you stand for the true and the living God. I will talk about this further in, a ne in our next setting. But I love you, my friends, with the love of the Lord. Lord. If you need to talk to me, you can talk to me. You can write me. 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you, uh, 78244 is the zip code. Uh, you can also contact me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends. Uh, with the love of the Lord, God bless you.